Hi, welcome to this screencast on using Seesaw uh, for student-driven digital portfolios. And I'm here on the main page of Seesaw. You can get here by typing in web.seesaw.me. And you'll see here is a quick description of Seesaw and what it does and how it empowers students to document their, to independently document their learning and provide an audience for their work. So that's what we're going to kind of look at today, how we can sign in and get this started and manage students. So we're going to talk about sign up. If you tap in sign up free, we're going to tap I'm a teacher and then you sign up as a teacher. The easiest way to do it is to click sign up with Google. That way you don't have to remember another password. It's going to automatically pull. Most people stay logged into your Google, so it's really easy to access. And so because I've already had an account before, it's going to automatically log me in. But it will take you through the whole process of logging in with Google like you do with any other um, program. So I'm going to name the class as we get ready to start. I'm just going to name this class Practice. So that's the first thing it's going to do is to prompt you to name your class and then choose your grade level. And I'm going to go with second grade. And as soon as you create your class and you choose your grade level, it will let you know. And it usually is a, does a good job of asking you, depending on the level that you choose. Primary level is going to tell you to kind of stick with the QR code login. But then they also have an email lot sign in down here as well for older kids. I click my check mark. Now it's going to prompt me to add names. It's very easy to upload your student names in bulk as well. If you tap that, it automatically gives you here. You can just copy and paste those names in. Real quick process. So I'm going to add in a couple of students. And they're going to be fake kids. Anna fake and Bobby fake. So I have created my class. As soon as you create your class in Seesaw, the first thing it's going to do is give you a quick little tutorial. As it says, add your first post. They give you a quick video on getting started in 60 seconds. And one thing about Seesaw, it does a very good job of getting information and to you. And they, they have lots and lots of resources, lots of resources. And as soon as you create your class, you'll automatically get a notification that you created one. And they'll send you another link to your, they'll also give you an access to your QR code. So don't even worry about that if you did not get that in the very beginning. So I'm automatically dropped into my class feed here, my feed view. It's very, as you start looking at it and working with it, you kind of see it kind of reminds you of Facebook in a way. But it is such a wonderful tool that we use with students. So we're going to look at the sign here. When I click my plus sign, you're going to see all the different ways you're going to add items into Seesaw. You can add photos, videos, drawings, and it'll probably give you an interactive whiteboard here. And you see I have a pencil, an eraser, labels. And this is very user friendly with the drawing piece with the iPad. You can upload files on the iPad. It's going to also add, it'll give you the option of accessing your camera roll as well. You can add a note and links to any websites outside of Seesaw. For example, if you created the Padlet, you want to throw that link in there so kids can access it easily. So I'm going to choose a note to get started with. And I'm just going to say welcome to Seesaw. And then when I tap my check mark, you also see you have the option to use your voice to leave a message for your students or instructions. So that comes in real handy if you need to differentiate your instructions for students who are still having a little trouble with reading. You think about lower level kids, the kids in the primary grades as well, who are not yet reading, but they can still upload products into Seesaw with instructions. You just give those instructions verbally. Once you're done with your text on your note, you just tap your check mark and ask for anything that you're going to do. If you add photos, 
links, anything. You just go through that process of tap tapping on that check mark once you're done. Now, once I've created my assignment, the next thing, the next step is getting it to my kids. If I tap everyone, it can go to everyone. But what if I want to differentiate a little bit and I only want this to go to Anna and not Bobby? Then you can choose the students and it'll only go to those particular kids. But I'm going to give this to everyone. Success, I've uploaded my first item to CSO. So as you can see how it kind of scrolls down and that's how the kids get there. And then when I talk about feedback, that's what the like is for. Tell them to comment. And again, it gives a microphone to give voice comments to record. Or type your comment. Now let's look at managing our class. Once again, if you've forgotten your class code, that's what this for in the manage uh, section of the website for CSO. I'm just going to go to manage class. And as you can see here, I also have the option to add a co-teacher. You just type in the email address, invite a teacher, and you can have a co-teacher. That would be awesome. I can change my student sign-in mode from class code to I may want to do emails. When you click on manage student, this is where you can add or remove students. You can actually change their icon. If you have a kid that just needs a, um, does not like the animal that they've chosen because it's all random when you first put your students in, you have that option. When you first start Seesaw, you can have students see each other's work, or you can enable or disable any of these settings within the management piece of Seesaw. We're going to skip down here. Same thing here about requiring approval. When you first start, you probably want to do that. You may change that setting later, but you will, when students submit something to Seesaw before it shows on the class feed, it will prompt you to give approval. If you want students to give you some information back, if you send something out and want it back, you will have to enable item editing so that they can enable, they can edit that information that you sent them, whether it's a note or an image. If you wanted them to label something, they have to have editing rights in order to do that and to send it back to you. So you have to think about what your goals are on that particular day with Seesaw. Once you enable parent access, it'll give you the option to invite your parents. It'll let you print a paper invite for every single student. The students will only, or the parent will only get an invite to their students. So right here, my two kids, you'll see it. There's an individual sheet for each kid and their individual QR code for parents to join and have access to their digital portfolio. And this is a piece that a lot of people are just raving about and having that opportunity for parents to give their, their kids feedback on a daily basis. Um, you can also, there's a blog piece with it. If you want to manage folders, skills, have things saved to the camera roll. So you have all these options here in managing class. So we're going to move on. So within this and with the invite parents part we've already covered, you also have a calendar view for any work that you have in there. And a skills view, which we, we could learn more about that within Seesaw's resources. So that's the very basics of getting started with Seesaw, getting your class created, getting your students imported into the program, and then allowing the kids to click the plus sign and upload their work and approve. And when you get ready to, when your students submit work into Seesaw, the notifications is where you'll find their work that you need to approve before it 
chose on the class feed. Okay, so that's the basics of Seesaw getting started. Once again, if you have any questions, you can email me at elivingston at orichannyschools.net or contact your school's DIS.